Welcome to the Golden Age of Cardboard podcast, where we remember a time when stacks of cards were held together with rubber bands and Mickey Mantles were put in bike spokes. We hope you will enjoy and reminisce as you come along with us as we tell stories about the baseball cards from the Golden Age of Baseball. We will examine the state of the vintage baseball card market and talk to some of the greatest collectors in the hobby. You won't be hearing us talk about any chrome or shiny cards here. Now, to take you on this retrospective journey, here's your host, direct from the shallow end of the gene pool, my son, Mike Moynihan. Yo and hello everybody, Mike here. My name's Mike. Still Mike. This is Golden Age of Cardboard Podcast. Another episode for you. If you came here accidentally or intentionally, if you came here accidentally, just stick around a while. We're going to talk some fun stuff tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about a subject that I think every collector, even if you're vintage, modern, it doesn't matter. We all face this issue. And that is the issue is how the heck do we store all these things to keep them safe, to keep them organized to keep them where we can see them easily and enjoy them. There's so many issues that go into this idea of storage. Whether you have slabs or raw cards or whatever, we're going to talk through it. We're going to give you some tips, some tricks, hopefully some solutions for you that you can apply today to your collection and make it just more enjoyable for you. Because that's at the end of the day, we need to enjoy our collections. And if it's a mess, it's hard to enjoy it. And Tonight, I'm bringing on a good friend of mine who has a lot of the same problems that I have. What's up, Bart? What's up, Mike? Thanks for having me. You bet, man. Uh, you and I have known each other years now, right? Um, and yeah. welcome. This is your first time on the Golden Age of Cardboard podcast. I'm honored. It's It's been a dream of mine, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Stop lying. But... Uh, I do appreciate you being here and you and I have had discussions about this. Uh, I mean, you've been here to the card room before. Yep. Uh, I think you came to a Dallas show. I think one time. Thanks for having me. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and you've seen the space constraints that I have. And, you know, I know that you have a, a large collection for those since you're, this is your first time. What do you primarily collect? What's kind of your thing? And maybe what challenges do you face as, a storage issue uh what do i collect geez i collect everything i just try to uh, keep it capped to a certain degree but uh i, I don't know i got probably about 4500 slabs or something like that i try not to get it too, uh, much larger than that just because of the volume uh, i collect all the famers i guess i'm primarily football but i got tons of baseball um massive 49ers collection um and jerry rice uh specifically as well um but I mean, you know, everything that's kind of popular in a hobby, if at some point it builds up enough staying power, it, it gets my eye as well. Um, yeah, so that's kind of me in a nutshell for, for what I collect. Um, what's the I rest? Thought, well, it was interesting <laughs> when you said I have about 4,500 slabs and I try to keep it to that, you know, like, like that's <laughs> where people are going, what? 4,500 yeah. slabs. Um, so I, we all have our own style, I guess. And I, of course I like quality in the cards. Otherwise, you know, the slabs wouldn't be part of the, the you know, calculation there, but, um, as a collector, a lifelong collector, uh, you know, even just a few cards a month or a couple months will build up significantly over time. Um, when you talk, you know, I'm not quite as old as you, but you know, those years have still been adding up on me. Um, and so it just grows in volume. And then there's just, uh, you know, breadth and depth that you want in a collection um, to, you know, uh, be proud of yourself and how, what work you've put into it and everything. And so while you want the quality at some point, and definitely to me, quantity becomes a quality as well, right? Uh, especially, you know, my Jerry Rice collection was like that. It was, you know, now... Well, I guess I, I am at least on record at, at PSA registry for having the most, you know, slabbed rice cards. Anybody doing, you know, team runs and stuff like that. I've got the 
from 48 to present 49ers team run of, you know, whatever tops or Bowman or now prism has been done for the year and stuff. And so the longevity, just like you do the tops hall of famers, you know, at some point that quantity becomes the quality. Uh, and so I enjoy that piece of it too. Well, volume comes significantly with those types of endeavors, right? I've never heard it worded that way. You've never said that to me before. And I think that's a brilliant way for a guy, for guys like us to, who are buying, not, not super high grade cards all the time. Although you have some great ones in your collection, no doubt, but it's the, the quality becomes the quantity. It, it, it's what makes it quality is the, the volume of the cards, the great cards that you have, regardless of the grade. Right. And I, I've never heard you say that. And that is a very astute observation about collecting. It, it becomes, that's kind of our hunt to a certain degree, right? Cause we know there's money involved and things like that, but it's not, we're not trying to flex to ourselves, you know, can I spend this amount of money on a card? It's, can I say, you know, can I consistently hunt for these cards? Can I consistently, um, you know, prioritize my hobby and stuff like that? And can I do it over a long period of time and put the thought, and, you know, there's, uh, you get a little bit of a, you know, maybe an internal return on investment there as you, you know, the enrichment from that and, and being the, the complexity and the depth of it, as opposed to just, you know, Hey, let me buy the highest possible grade of this card or something like that. That that loses its value at the longer you're in the game, I think. Which well, part? We, still, we still like those things, but you know, yeah. Just the saying. value loses its luster, right? I mean, it's it's more about the card, it's more about building the collection, the internal satisfaction that we get by seeing a project complete or getting closer and you know. Uh, it, it, we are so like-minded, which is why, probably why we're friends. But let me ask you this, because I did an episode a couple episodes ago about set registries and which ones were my favorites and why I loved them. I know you're a big set registry guy. You just love it. What do you like about the set registry? I know I'm not, we're not talking about storage yet. I get it, guys. I'm just, I've got Bart here. I want to take advantage. Tell him why, you, what, what appeals to you about the set registry? Uh, well, I, you know, I'm a big fan of PSA, so I like the registry for a lot of reasons, and P and the registry is why what got me there. And I think it ties in pretty well to the storage, though, because you know when you have a large collection, a big collection with breadth and depth and things like that, then you become a curator of things, right? And just the same as you want to curate it through proper storage and stuff, then you want to curate your items uh, through a registry. You got to keep track of them. Um, I, you know, whatever was before Excel, I remember putting it in that and insert it in the computer as a kid. After, well, eventually I, I got out of the three ring binder or something in the paper, <laughs> right? right. Um, and then did, did Excel. I remember printing it out as a, you know, as a kid on the, the old paper that came out of the printer all attached to each other and you had to take the perforations off. Yep. I just, I lost the ability to do that level of detail. I don't quite have the OCD that you do, Mike, <laughs> uh, to keep that, that that beast of an Excel going. Uh, I tried for years because I was trying to grow, you know, Jerry Rice collection. And it was just not just graded cards, but raw cards and things. But I just couldn't keep up with it in the timelines. And the registry kind of, uh, you know, lifted a lot of that burden off of me initially. Um, so you, you're keeping the inventory and things like that. And then um, in order to help focus, you know, because if you have a broad aperture for cards that you like to collect and things, um, you know, a set lets you focus a little bit as you go. All right, let me let me hone in on this one a little bit or something like that, as opposed to just always about. So, you know, because we like to work on little projects in between the, the overall collection. And so it kind of focused on that. And then there's there's some competitive nature to it too, um, especially if that aligns with your goals. Now there's some sets where completion is just you know a goal or you know close to completion because there's just some cards you know, especially in some of those baseball sets that include pre-war things. You just you're never going to touch, um, you know, unless you sell everything. But if you can get you know 90 percent, you know, you can tap your shoulder on the back type of thing. But then there's some sets some of the 49ers ones for me, then, then I am competitive and I, I want the highest grades in certain ones, or at least I don't, I want to set myself up for a decent opportunity to be uh, an upper tier collector of 49ers cards or something like that. So registry points and things like that have helped that. Um, 
when you have a volume of a collection like we do as well. Sometimes you just want to see the cards, you know, I can click on the gallery and go through them um, as opposed to go, going through every box or, you know, moving tons of boxes out of a way before I can get to the box with that, that card in there. So it just gives you a whole host of options um, to mess around with and view and, and share as well. I love that part of it. You know, it doesn't happen enough, but people can comment on your, your, your sets. And I like to go to other people's sets and click on their galleries and things and, you know, where they're branching off to. And, you know, both of us, you know, send care packages out from time to time to other folks and just kind of spread the hobby love. And it's kind of neat to see, oh, they're working on something like that. I got something that they might enjoy. So I slide it over to them. I, I just, I like all those aspects of it. Yeah. I, I've noticed on my set register, some of my sets, I'll have a comment from you. I have very few comments from outsiders, you know, just people, but you're one of those that I know you've looked at a set because you'll say, Hey, nice job, Mike, or something like that, you know, and, or this is really cool or something. And I'm like, Hey, he looked at it, you know, and I don't, I don't do it for that. Honestly, I, I do it for me to be truthful. Yeah. And, uh, but it is incredibly handy. And the, again, I wish someone would make a universal set registry uh, because then you could be slab Gnostic and yeah. I don't want to be, I'm not saying I would convert necessarily to a different grading company. That mean, I have SGC slabs, a few of them I have, um, but at the same time, it'd be, it'd be even more fun to broaden, to let everybody, how we feel about the PSA set registry, a universal set registry would let everybody feel that way that has slab cards, right? And yeah. then, then you just expand the people that enjoy that, these aspects that we're talking about to people that may not like PSA for whatever reason. And, and that's fine. You don't, you know, there's no law in, in the hobby that says you have to use PSA. Yeah. And so that would be just, again, if somebody could figure that out and wants to spend the millions of dollars to develop the software or knock yourself out. Uh, I'll be a, your first subscriber. Bart will be your second and we'll, we'll, we'll be off and running. Um, Okay, we got to get to storage because I appreciate your input on the registry thing because I I think it's good for people to hear it from people other than me and guys that have been in the hobby a really long time like yourself. You know, hey, we're not saying this because we are naive or don't, you know, it's just, it's a good solution, right? Um, my problem here in my room, if you're listening on podcast, you can't, see it or if you only listen on podcasts you've never seen my card room it's a and bart you've been here it's a tiny little bedroom right it's yeah i i have to say i was impressed by your ability to pack it all in there when i got there you have the absolute best camera angle there and that's not a knock at all but you have the best camera angle possible right now so i thought it was a much bigger room and i was impressed that you got all of that stuff in that room uh, when I came to visit for sure. Yeah. The corner to corner camera angle shows the absolute maximum, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, hypotenuse of the triangle or whatever that we're looking at. So the reality is it's, it's a 10 by 12 room. Maybe it's not very big. Uh, every, all the walls are covered with sports art or press steels. I'm just looking around. I got jerseys hanging and comic books and all kinds of stuff. So because you've got wall space and then, and you could use wall space either to hang stuff or you could use it to put up shelves right uh, on your walls. Uh, there, there's different ways to solve that problem, but we're all limited by whatever space. And my wife, Julie, God love her. She is a saint for letting me even do this at all. But she has told me like you, you're in jeopardy of, you know, getting some digits cut off if you, you know, let your collection leak out of this room. <laughs> And she's like, I've given you an entire room. If you can't keep it in there, you don't need it. That's what she said. So now I've got boxes starting to stack up and uh, that whole thing. What, what is you, what, are, what have you and your wife agreed to on how to contain your collection? Ooh, I try not to bring it up and that way I don't get the, the left and right <laughs> limits established to me. Um, I, 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 as you know, I'm a military guy, so I move a lot. So uh it is one of like when I bought this house, um, well, I had to sell a lot of cards in order to get the house too. But when I got the house, you know, I, I made sure I got a certain amount of bedrooms so that there was going to be the possibility of a, of a room um, for that, you know, hobby space or whatnot. And then I try uh, to pick the room with the least amount of windows possible. 
Um, not just for the light, but then for the wall space itself. Uh, I really want that wall space. As you know, it's an absolute premium when you're doing these types of things. Uh, I haven't been able to do the posters as much. I still got lots of frames and I never never really get to see the walls and stuff because I love displaying cards so much in the, in the cases. But uh, that's where I go. And then I definitely look for one with a decent closet. My wife knows that too. So uh, that combo of, of wall space, you know, it can just be height or... Um, how the door is configured in the room or something like that because I move every two years so it's a, it's a, actually a, a common thing that I'm looking into um, you know a decent decent closet in that and then I try not to pick a room that's all the way yours is perfectly pl placed in your house as well it's kind of right in the middle so you're in uh, yelling reach <laughs> right or uh, I try to keep a, pick a room that's you know uh, if something's going on somewhere else in the house I can actively hear it as opposed to in the you know the the deep end of the hallway or something like that. So that's kind of where the first choice goes there. I hadn't thought that's a great point about windows because uh, windows are space killers uh, mm -hmm. and light givers, which is, you know, those are negative, both negatives for hobby space, right? Uh, I only have the one window here. It's got plantation shutters on it. So it's dark. Like if I turn the lights off, it's dark, you know, even in the middle of the day. And so, which it is 99, you know, a lot of the time my card room's dark. But I'm not in here. And even then I have different light settings where I can keep it dim, just dim enough where I can kind of move around and not trip and stub my toe or something. So people need to, th my, my tip of that is think about your space that you're putting your hobby. A lot of people though are confined to, man, I, my wife just gave me a closet, you know, in the workout room or whatever. And, and look, you don't have to have a, a big space to enjoy your hobby. That's, that's not what we're saying at all, but you need to have a space for it. You know, sure. that's climate controlled. You don't want to be sticking cards up in the attic or the basement unless it's a, you know, you don't, <laughs> you, you don't. just don't. Yeah. <laughs> Period. I mean, risk of flood, all that, whatever. Right. I mean, why, why risk it? Uh, but you know, you need a space and you need to take care of these cards that we, we spend money and time and, and all those things, energy mm -hmm. on, uh, super important. So that's great from a 30,000 foot view. Then we start honing in to different kinds of collectors. And <clears throat> for the longest time, I've been a guy that hasn't put sets in binders. Why? Because they take up a lot of space. Yeah. So you're, you're going, okay, I can have sets in binders or I can have them in a box. The negative of the box is you never get to really see the cards. You got to pull them out and risk screwing them up. And you know, you're just flipping through them. I mean, it's not the same. There is nothing like going through a binder, right? I mean, it is the funnest thing to just flip through a binder of a set or a, a player run or whatever you're doing. Whenever I see other guys with collections that do that, but the, the space that you're giving up is it's a pain isn't it, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so then you got that, but you know, but I've been trying to figure out in here how to do that. I'm, I'm maybe going to have a whole wall that's going to be shelving, covering that window, and and I don't really need the window. I don't want it open ever, <laughs> so uh, I don't need the light pollution in here. Um, so if, if you're a set guy, you have to decide binders or, or boxes, and and. Are you going to stack them? Are you going to put them in tubs? You know, there's so many different ways to skin that cat. Uh, and we're going to say that about all these things. There's no right or wrong. We're not going to be like, you have to do it this way or you're an idiot. Uh, but we're going to try to just throw out a bunch of different ideas. Hey, I hadn't thought about that. And I get so many ideas. I don't know about you, but man, watching other people's videos and oh, seeing yeah. them do different stuff. And, oh, here's how I do it. I'm like, wow, that's pretty creative. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try that because I've tried, I'm telling you, just about everything over the... Yeah, I love when guys not only share that, but then share where they got those supplies and things like that, too. And I, I start searching real, real quick afterwards. Absolutely. Uh, so, again, if you're a vintage guy, because um, it, does, it doesn't really matter. It's it, you, have this, you face the same problems no matter what kind of collector you are, right? Whether you're vintage. Now, it will matter what kind of collector you are if you collect raw versus slabs. Those are different storage solutions, right? What do you what do you do to store your slabs? Uh, for the most part, I have the uh, graded card two row boxes. 
Um, and that's what the majority of them are in. Uh, they make bigger ones, but they start to just get too heavy and things like that. You, you're too likely to drop them. I uh, have some single row ones of those, but I pretty much do card savers in those. And that's card someday, maybe I'll grade that or something like that. So it's kind of set aside. Um, and then they don't kind of jostle around quite as much. And I don't move those ones around. But the double rows have been my most... Uh, uh, just the highest volume of what I've used and they, they haven't really failed me. They're pretty sturdy and uh, you can stack a fair number of them on top of each other without much concern. What I like about using graded cardboard boxes for any cards is that if you use them for your graded cards, it works great. You can use them for, like you said, card savers or top loaders even. Mm -hmm. You know, you always want to go with the the biggest common size yeah. that you're going to be using, right? And and I, I believe in keeping uniformity with your storage because it makes it easier to stack. It makes it easier to uh, put into spaces, you know, and do you agree with that? Is that? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's huge. The, the stacking for me is, is one of the biggest things um, to have evenly sized boxes. Now, that's not to say I don't have a whole host of uh, different storage solutions that kind of get mixed in. Um, but when 80% of them are in one type of box, um, that I can easily, they, you know, the edges go up against each other so that the, the stacks aren't leaning one way or the other and things. Uh, then, you know, those few anomalies get a lot easier to worry about storage and stuff like that. And so the, the otter ball storage boxes or, you know, crates or whatever I got them in, then those are ones I use for uh, maybe less temporary or more temporary things where I'm going to sort through them a little bit more often. And then they're, you know, at the front of the closet or wherever the case may be. Um, where some of those ones that uh, maybe I'm not going to crack that open quite as often. Uh, those, you know, nice boxes at all or same shape and everything make it a lot easier to push them towards the back. No doubt. No doubt. And because nothing's as annoying as having some 5,000 count. Let's say you're doing dealing with ungraded cards, 5,000 count boxes with 3,500 counts. And you're trying, you know, it's like mix and match and it feels like a hodgepodge and it just starts getting annoying. I, I try to tell people, buy more storage than you need because you're going to fill it up right yeah. uh if you're going to collect long term like you said hey you you may not buy a lot of cards every month but you do that month after month after month after month it's going to start accumulate i built the beast in 2018 so that was five years ago and it holds uh i don't know 3500 slabs give or take and i remember when i first put all my graded cards in there it's got uh, four rows of small, you know, normal size mm -hmm. slabs and then two rows for for tall boy slabs. And I had one row and one drawer of regular and two drawers. That's it of the biggers, bigger tall boy ones. It's full now, five years later. So, it, I mean, I I can fit a few more cards in it, but it's getting or I'm having to build an extension for the beast uh, that my son's working on right now. So. I think that's yeah. good for, for all things like that, right? We, we, it's easy to say it for supplies, buy more penny savers, buy more top loaders, you know, buy more team bags or whatever the case may be, because we always find ourselves, you know, maybe cracking a pack or getting some cards. Oh, I'd like to put it in something else or take care of it a little bit better. And you're, you're looking around and you're like, oh, crap, I don't want to wait a week or so. But it's the same thing for a storage box or something. Um, those double row boxes that I bought, I think when I initially bought them, I bought a an entire industrial box full of them that were completely flat i don't know 40 or 50 of them or something um and i'm i still got a couple left in it um it's the cheapest yeah. for sure but no regrets and and getting some extra there yeah don't overlook the cost savings too like you just mentioned you know if you buy in bulk you you save and they come you know like go to your hobby shop you know and if you're going to go to your local card store and and buy a bunch of boxes buy a bunch that you can get a discount for buying in bulk and keep them folded up. You don't need to, you know, turn them all into boxes and then, uh, you know, just pull them out when you're ready. I have several just un unfolded boxes just waiting mm -hmm. uh, for more cards to be put in them eventually. Uh, so it is so important to just overbuy uh, and I'll, and I'll leave that tip kind of there. Raw cards. I know you don't do a ton of raw cards. I know you have some, but it's not I a huge. Know, for you. I, I try to not to go too far in it. Yeah. Um, 
for me, I'm a, I'm a 5,000 count box guy. Like I'll have 5,000 count boxes and if they're a bunch of them aren't going to be full, but I keep them folded up. And then I, I actually have a few 3,500 counts that I use and then they get kind of, okay, this is ready to convert over to a 5,000. And that's kind of my, my staple size for raw mm -hmm. cards. Uh, a lot of people think I only do graded stuff. I have, you've seen it. I have how many more, how many more raw cards do I have than graded cards? Definitely a lot more. Absolutely. Tons yeah. and tons and hundreds of thousands more raw cards than I do graded cards. And so uh, those just, you know, go in 5,000 cat box. I wish I was better organized with that. I think it's really important for people to label their boxes, which is part of storage is being able to, the whole point of storing it is to be able to find it. Right. And forget about spreadsheets and stuff we were talking about earlier. That's important too, but for a different reason, but when you want to find, put your hands on a card, labeling your boxes is super important. Uh, I've seen different guys uh, do different things like taking a top loader and they'll cut it out and tape it to the front of the box as kind of a, uh, a label there, you know, a little label holder. And then they'll just put in a, you can pull in and out. Cause what I do now, which is probably pretty stupid and certainly old school is I would, I write in pencil on the top of the box, not only what's in the box, but when it, what's in each row. So basically wherever the, on the lid, I write above the row, what's in that, what's on that row. And sometimes I move stuff around and when I do, I have to erase, you know, and, and, rewrite it and and that's probably not the most efficient way honestly i like the idea of putting top loaders old top loaders or something that can just hold a little slip of paper hey i'm not too far off from you i i, I use a sharpie um on the, the the lid of that box and i put what's in there but you know i'm rotating so much stuff and then what you initially thought you were putting that in a box well then that grows bigger and you know if it was a year span or this is you know the 1970s well eventually your collection will be big enough where you need a couple of those so now it's 1970 to 74 or something like that so you know it's not the prettiest thing but you know i'll scratch out you know a year or something like that and put uh put it on there you get a couple of spaces on the front and then i'll just pick that sucker up and twist it around and use the other side of that <laughs> lid. and then uh, you know a little trick i guess is stuff that uh, is more solidified in its place in that box you know that i'm not going to mess with as much i'll put in black ink on a sharpie but if i know it's a box i'm regularly going to come back to uh for display purposes or things like that i write it in red ink and then it just pops out to me when i open the box and open the closet or wherever i'm, I'm looking for the box uh, i also kind of kind of keep those ones you know off to the side but it's a little easier that red ink just hits me in the face from the sharpie and i kind of go from there as well uh, i haven't thought uh, about yeah but I don't, I don't know about that one because the boxes rub up against each other a lot. So that might knock it off. Yeah, I, I haven't had that problem, if I'm being honest, over decades, literally. Um, there's sometimes I'll have to go back and rewrite it a little bit more, yeah. you know, if, it's, if it has rubbed a little. But I can always tell what's been there, or what's there. Uh, and I can always fix it. But the Sharpie thing would, I'd be like, oh, my gosh. Because I, not that I change things out a lot, but enough where... I would have a lot of scribbles, like you said. <laughs> um, yeah, I do. I do. I, I can't lie about that part, but um, that's part of the fun for me too, is, you know, I'm updating, you know, how I'm storing it, how I'm taking care of it or whatever, but I'm not going to, uh, you know, I, if I didn't do that, it would be the, at the cost of not going through those boxes as often. Right. Yeah. I, talking about storage, I don't have a card room right now. I, I had to ditch it about a month ago because I've uh, got some changes going on, and one of them is I'm leaving, you know, the states for a year, and the family's staying put here, so it changes some circumstances. So I'm in a closet right now, but, um, you know, I lost my my train of thought on that one. But that's all right. Um, I like well, well, my old storeroom that year, my uh, hobby room that you saw, I had I think nine display cases of PSA cards. Uh, and I love showing up. I like to see it. I just want to, I want to see them. I want to see them this chunk over here. And I do a different display kind of for each one because I have such a broad range of things I collect. I'll have a basketball one. I'll have a modern football chrome one. And I'll have, you know, nice, pretty vintage baseball uh, as best I can. And I'm always trying to develop that stuff. Well, 
something always gets left out. You know, you know how it is when it's that big, you know, ah, man, I don't have a place for this. Uh, I don't have my, a place for my signed balls or, you know, thankfully I don't have a big bobblehead collection, but at some point, you know, you just have those things that get left out. For me, I have those posters and frames and things that, that get left out because of those things. And so I constantly keep that rotation. So I'd much rather do some scribbling on some boxes and things like that, as opposed to, uh, you know, not having a rotation because I, uh, I like collecting so much that I don't want to have a stagnant collection. Um, and so that's, that. that's the cross I bear, I guess, right? But I think you bring up a good point that display cases and how you display your cards is part of the storage, you know, thought process. It has to be part of it. And I, if I had more wall space, I would love to have, uh, do you use the Penzoni cases, by the way, yeah. or? Uh, I have a couple of others on the, the ones that are smaller. We're not Penzoni, but the big ones are, are all Penzoni. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a brand you can Google Penzoni. It's spelled just like you would uh, think it's spelled P E N Z O N N I. And it's a, uh, they make display cases. Uh, I'm actually thinking about my son's thinking about, cause he's working on some more stuff for me and doing some display cases and i've told him like the biggest thing collectors want is it's it's this weird combination we all want high quality at low cost right that's yeah. like that's the that's the rub and that's you know these penzoni cases if you're buying the 30 or 45 how big are yours the big 55 one? typically i think so those are a hundred and what dollars a piece uh yeah it keeps going up right um i think they're around one probably 150 160 sometimes but then you get your shipping tossed in there if you got it on ebay or something and it's another 45 50 bucks but right. so it's up there but um they're worth it they're sturdy and uh and you do get enough quality that you aren't you, once you get it you're not second guessing the purchase right especially once you see cards filling it up and you're yeah. like this is why i bought this thing but if you think about it if you get a few of those that can again a lot of people have smaller collections they just have things you know i only want to collect certain things and so they're very limited in terms of how broad their collection is having some penzoni cases to display solves a lot of your storage issues because you get to enjoy them see them and they're you know presented nicely all those things that we all want um again it's always been like god I'd love to have that you know uh yeah. someday and maybe i will someday i don't know but I like yeah. they, to me, they also create an awareness of my collection, you know, enhanced awareness, because obviously I keep track of what I buy and, you know, I understand and I remember seeing it and all those things. But, um, you know, I like things that go together, even when I'm just, you know, picking up random side cards. It's this insert. Or, oh, well, I'd be pretty cool if I got the other 49ers or nationals of those types of inserts. And I can kind of put it up and it's kind of a mental checklist or something like that, or just when I, Here's a bunch of nice things I'm putting in the display cases. Well, you know, I don't have a lot of game use stuff, or I, I don't have a lot of, you know, autographs for this, or I don't have a, a, enough pre-war to, you know, round out my collection. And kind of, it's just a visual representation of like, well, I'm very proud of what I've got, but here's also an angle I'd like to work on, as opposed to just, you know, having to imagine that card in the box or having to go through all of those cards, you know, in the closet or wherever you keep them. That's an interesting thought too. I, I think it would also help, especially if you have a, I'll use, I'll put in air quotes, a smaller collection where you can do it in a, a few display cases. It keeps you probably if you have that small of a collection, you're not worried about this, but I buy cards dupes, you know, from time to time. It happens. And yeah. It's mainly because I'm lazy and don't want to look at my list or I'm, I'm on the go or whatever. But if I'm here at the, in the card room, how easy if I could just look up. Yep. I don't have that. I don't see that one. That's not, you know, uh, I can't make that mistake. And if I did, then I'm really, that's on me. Right. <laughs> like, no yeah. One's lame. There's been some times that I've gone after rainbows. Um, you know, I don't do it too often. And now some of the rainbows get a little ridiculous with the, the number of cards, but uh, I still like to do it from time to time. And that's the best way I've found It's just, you know, you get three, four of them, all right, toss them in there. I'm looking at it and, you know, and then I just have that reminder, like you said, if it, sometimes when you're in the room, it's a little bit easier, but if I've seen it enough times, I got a little mental picture, you know, cause anytime I'm randomly scrolling on a uh, eBay or something like that, when I'm waiting for my wife to finish shopping or I got a couple minutes just sitting wherever I do that. And I have those kind of visual representations in my head 
uh, oh, I need this one, you know, or I just added that, et cetera. And it, it's pretty helpful. It's a nice little picturesque checklist. Let me ask you this. Where do you think, you know, the Zion slash Pelican cases kind of fit in hobby storage? Yeah, we, we talked about this a little off air, you know, I, I've pondered it for sure because some of the cases are they kind of nice looking, right? Um, I'm immediately probably like you kind of thwarted a little bit just based on the, the size of the collection I have. Like, you know, they'll be like, oh, it, you know, it holds 100 slabs or whatever. Man, cool story, bro. I like I'm not buying 50 of those. Right. And so then what am I picking to put in there? Well, I'm not putting my necessarily highest end ones in there because those are probably sitting in the safe, right? Or they're displayed. Right. Or they're displayed for sure. And then stacking a bunch of briefcases or cases like that doesn't seem like a great idea. And then, you know, I'm not looking to carry them around a bunch, but you know, if you're that, that one that's taking them to card shows, that might be the best solution for you. Absolutely. Um, in the smaller volume of things. And then some of those cases, while they protect the cards and the cards don't move around based on, you know, uh, this, you know, configurations inside, you start stacking those things that have rounded corners and other things. They don't necessarily sit on top of each other very well. And if I have a larger collection, I can't have, uh, you know, 10 or 12 of these things kind of stacked up and then just, you know, what caved in that wall in the other room because I just heard something fall, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And when I look in the cases and I've gotten a few of them as samples to try out and give away and stuff like that. It always feels like inefficient use of space because yeah. they're doing what they need to do to protect the the contents of the case with padding and all this other stuff, but that's taking away from valuable card space. And so it's kind of this, you got to have that, but yeah. you're giving up, what are you giving up? And, and you're carrying it around. And I've had guys come up to me at, at shows and literally they'll open their Pelican case and I'll look at it and then, Oh man, this is great. What else do you have? No, no, this is my entire collection. Like then it fits in one Pelican case, you know. Then it's a perfect solution, probably sure. for folks, because you know, at the same time, if th if somebody, you know, because some folks just want the really high end and a smaller volume of cards, um, and you know, there you can definitely appreciate some of those collections. They're pretty nice, right? But yeah. that person probably also doesn't have what we're lucky enough to have is a hobby room. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, they got to pull it out of a closet and then go find some counter space, whether they're in their dining room or, you know, um, at their coffee table or whatever. And at that point, then, yes, you wanted the, the whole case that needed protecting. Right. You know, um, in case some kids come and stumbling over with a toy or whatever, I can close the case or something. But um, probably for you and me who can, uh, you know have a more protected environment because it's already in its own secluded room and things like that. And I know I'm not falling on that box right. uh, types of things Then I don't necessarily need it a, a, a padded box as much as I just don't need cards moving around and shifting too much. Yeah. It's a good solution for, again, a, a, a super small kind of collection or, you know, it's, it's great for transit because there you can, we're talking long-term storage here, guys, which is what, what we're kind of really talking about. Not, hey, I'm going to a show. I'm going to throw some cards in here that I might trade or sell or whatever. Then a Pelican case for any collector is great. Like that's that's a good solution to carry your cards around. Uh, beats the old days of us, you know, throwing them in, just throwing them in our backpack or whatever back in the day. Uh, I mean, it it's a, definitely has a place, but in terms of kind of the topic we're discussing, you know, storing it permanently in a location um you know what are you going to do uh, for me if i bring any cards to anywhere to show off or whatever or even when i'm going to a show and buying cards right i don't have a pelican case empty ready to fill up i'm i'm just throwing them in the backpack because i know that's the temporary home until i get to the card room and and able to you know put them back put, put them into their permanent home right their forever home so I don't need that type of a solution. I think they're cool. I think, you know, they're annoying. It shows for me when people, kids just throw them up on the, on the showcase and you're trying to look at cards, but 
people don't people need to learn pelican case etiquette we need to do a class on that maybe I'll, that's a future episode pelican case etiquette. that's a fair point i've seen a lot of those pelican cases slammed on the glass like you know that guy probably paid a lot for his display case <laughs> right yeah good luck with that i do like when people at least ask if they can that's that's step one of pelican case etiquette ask the dealer if you can put the case on the glass that's step number one at least do that uh so yeah those are you know, I just we just see them a lot. They become very popular in the hobby. That I don't think they're a, a viable long term solution for any sizable collection. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Um, I do think it's it's you know amongst all the other things we've said, I think it's one of those probably as you're a, I don't want to say novice collector, but you know as the volume starts to grow and it's one of those probably visual stepping stones that you're taking your collection seriously for, you know, instead of a shoe box, if you jump to that as the next step or whatever, it's kind of, you know, for those folks, it's probably, you know, telling themselves that they're taking it more seriously and then showing it off as they're carrying it around. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm in this, in this hobby and stuff like that. So I, I kind of that piece of it too. And I'll give them props for, for taking those. Trips. I'm going to give you the last word, but my last kind of like, Hey, something to think about as we kind of finish up here. And then I'll let you give your, uh, I'll let you follow suit with your idea on this. If I was to tell somebody, what do I do with storage? The answer is start with what makes sense for you now, knowing you're going to grow and be willing to go, okay, that was a good solution for the moment and move on to a better solution. Don't be, don't hang on to something that's not working just because you feel some either financial attachment to it. Like, I got rid of all, I sold all my other like older cases that I don't need anymore because they're too small or, you know, I, I've decided to go a different route in storage. I find guys that are using that method and I go here, I've got these, you know, you want them for pennies on the dollar because I simply don't need them. Um, or, hey, dude, I'll give them to you. Just pay for shipping. Like I had some cool wooden boxes that hold held slabs, you know, that I had bought Penzoni type boxes, you know, they were slab boxes. Well, my collection got that was when my collection was small. And as it grew, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I knew guys that wanted them and liked them. Hey, just pay for the shipping. I'll give them to you. Like I, I've, I've gotten the use out of them that I needed. Don't be my, my advice is don't be afraid to find the bigger, better solution when your collection calls for it. Yeah. Or, go ahead. I, I couldn't probably foot stomp that any more than what you said. Cause you know, we, if, if you are a collector, um, you have seen your collection evolve, whether it's, you know, um, pivoting to other things, whether it's just building significant depth and whatever you're focusing on, but you've seen those things evolve. Well, you can, you had to have seen your storage evolve. We started with, you know, I started with Nike shoe boxes, right? And then, yep. man, that, that, you know, that box has sharper corners, which means it won't be rounded and mess up my cards as much. And we've progressed over time. And, you know, I initially started with, cause I, you know, I've, I've been subbing cards to PSA for a long time too. I was storing everything in those brown boxes that they came in. Cause they held, I don't remember off the top of my head, but you know, 18 to 20 cards at a time or something. Yep. And those were great. Well, I, you know, eventually I got some of those bigger two row boxes and I was started to put more stuff in there. And then I realized mm -hmm. I had about 50 or 60 of those just little brown boxes, which were good at the time. You know, and I had the, the player's name and I collected them, but it just didn't fit. Like I, I got a pivot here, <laughs> you know, 50 boxes out the window. I tried to, you know, use them for, you know, if I was mailing packages out or something, because those are always great. And then I would say, you know, if PSA or BGS or, or SGC send you cards in a specific box, that is always a pretty decent option to start with, right? If they are happy to send it, you know, across the country or across an ocean or something to get it to you safely and that whatever storage container uh that's a neat place to start for sure but uh you know if we're going to evolve our collections you know to curate that properly we have to evolve with our storage too Gotta so what would be kind of a final thought you'd want to leave people with as we as we close down the show here um i you know i like where you said we the growth part uh, i think you know if you're thinking long term and i would i would assume that the uh the constituents can constituency that you have of listeners um, is those type of folks either, you know, thinking about the long term or have already been in, in the long term. And, you know, we like to set up our rooms, just do the same, fill in the wall gaps and stuff. But 
uh, if we are collectors, we're not necessarily going to stop that. And so the thing is going to change in some way, shape, or form. And so you have to be open to some of that. We like the constants, the comforts within the hobby, but uh, we know that there's change. We've seen it in, in many aspects, and storage is one of them. So know that you're getting into it. If you you know have the opportunity to save some wall space or save some extra closet space and not fill it up immediately, do that because then you get some room to grow in and uh, you don't uh, burden yourself with some challenges later. Awesome. Great advice. Uh, as we finish up here, I want you to tell everybody, by the way, Bart has a great YouTube channel. He shows... PSA stuff. Um, I got to try it while I'm while I'm here. Hey, tubers, Bart coming at you with uh, good to see you tonight. I'm, you know, when, whatever you're going to start talking about. Uh, and you have a great demeanor about you on your channel. You're just you and, you know, usually enjoying an adult beverage and showing cards. And here's what I got today. Or here's what my new new PSA reveal. Here's what I'm sending off. Tell people where they can go find you if they want to find you on YouTube. Yeah, I try to keep it simple. So Bart's Cards on YouTube, same on Instagram. Um, yeah, hit me up, come visit this page, whatever. Uh, we talked about registry and things like that. I'm always excited to talk about that type of stuff too. So if you've got questions, just shoot me a message. And, uh, you know, but also, you know, drop by, say a comment, and then I'll come visit your, your page as well. Uh, I like to make those new inter interactions and things. And that's one of the ways I got involved with you, Mike, is, you know, somehow you were always, you know, making me aware of other collectors and other, you know, hobbyists out there. So um, I'll, I'm happy to continue that with others. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, I appreciate you. And man, I hope you guys learned something. Would love to hear down below you guys. What do you do? You know, we don't we're not up here sitting here thinking we have every solution figured out. We love learning from other people as well, both Bart and I. So put some comments down. Hey, here's what I do. It works really well for me. And here's why. Uh, would love to see those comments down below. Appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, you can Instagram me uh, at Baseball Collector Mike. Bart is Bart's Cards on Instagram. So if you're listening on podcast and you want to reach out to either one of us, just to tell us a story or whatever, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks, everybody, for watching this week. Thanks for listening. Next week's going to be awesome. We're going to be getting ready and gearing up for the national. So we can't wait to start talking about that. We'll see you guys soon. Keep collecting.